In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about what exactly statistics is, as well as define some of the terminology that we'll use as we progress through some of the ideas. A quick reminder to subscribe and click on the bell to receive notifications when we upload new videos. So statistics is the backbone of most research that goes on in and outside of a university. Regardless of which discipline you're in or what field of study you're in, you're almost surely taking a stats course and using that to analyze some data. So what exactly do statisticians do? Well, statistics involves um, defining a research question and then translating that question into a statistical statement that can be tested using data. We um, talk about designing the study and collecting the data, so how should we get our hands on some data? Once we have that, how do we summarize the data? How can we use those summaries to analyze? And from that analysis, can we generalize back to our population of interest? And once we've done that, how can we communicate the findings to a general audience? So statistics can generally be broken down into two categories, descriptive and inferential. So descriptive is what a lot of people think of when they first think of statistics or a statistic. So this is where we summarize a sample of data using plots or numeric summaries. So different plots, means, medians, standard deviations, these sorts of things. Inferential statistics is where we try and infer something about a population. So here's where we try and use a sample to generalize to a population. And this generally can be broken down into three, three sorts of areas. There's estimation, there's hypothesis testing, and there's prediction. Before doing any inference, we generally need to describe the data or summarize that, and then we can use that to do inference. So just to take in a simple example of what I mean by estimation, hypothesis testing, and prediction. Estimation, we might want to think of what is trying to estimate what is the average or mean salary of a CEO. And we may want to put an interval around that, say, we're pretty sure the average salary is in this range. Hypothesis testing might involve questions like, does a CEO who's six feet or taller earn more on average than one who's not? Prediction might be, for a particular CEO, what does our model estimate their salary would be? Okay, so these are all different forms of inferential statistics. So let's define some of the vocabulary that we're going to use as we progress through these ideas. The first is a unit or a subject. These are just the entities uh, on which data is collected. Okay, and it gets lots of different names, unit, subject, um, sometimes we call them people or individuals if they're people we're looking at. There's lots of different names that you'll come across. The second is the idea of a variable. Okay, and this is a recorded characteristic for the unit or for a person. And we have a separate video discussing the different types of variables that we can collect and how to summarize those. Usually when we have a set of data or a data table, it's often organized with um, individuals or units in the rows and variables in the columns. Now, the population is the group of interest for our study. So that is, who or what are we interested in studying? Now, often studying an entire population is difficult. It's too large or expensive or time consuming or, or just not possible. So what we do is we work with a sample. And a sample is a subset of the population to study. Okay, and again, separate videos, we talk about different ways of designing studies and collecting samples um, to to try and have a sample that represents our population. Okay, and it's important to remember this. The results of any study are only generalizable to the studied population. And what I mean by that is, suppose our population is we'd like to study something about a particular group with a particular disease. And our sample, we're only able to get those who are in a hospital in a very severe or late stage of the disease. While we'd like to generalize back to the population of people with that disease, we actually only can generalize back to the population of people with that disease in later severe stages. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about the difference between a um, parameter and a statistic, or sometimes called population parameter and sample statistic. The parameter is the thing or the quantity we'd like to know for the entire population. And the statistic or sample statistic is the estimate of the parameter from our sample. Okay, so maybe we'd like to know the mean or average age of an entire population. That's our parameter. We take a sample of data, say a few hundred individuals, and we calculate their mean age. That's our sample statistic, the sample mean, our best guess at our population parameter. 
So just writing down a few that we're going to come across. Mu for the population mean, X bar for the sample mean, or sigma for the population standard deviation, S for the sample standard deviation. Rho for the population correlation, R for the sample correlation. Okay, so these are all ideas that we'll build up to. One theme in the notation is that generally Greek letters are used to represent population or true or theoretical values. Latin letters are used to represent sample estimates. Now, external and internal validity. External validity refers to asking the question, is the estimate we get from our sample generalizable to an external population? In other words, how well can our, our sample estimate um, step out and represent an external population? Okay, and we'll look at examples of all these in a moment. Internal validity is essentially asking the question, is our sample estimate, right, or our sample statistic biased? And particularly, is there any confounding? Confounding is an idea we'll define and explore a lot more um, later on. Let's just quickly go through and make these a bit more concrete and bringing up an example, and we'll label all of these in reference to that specific example. So suppose we'd like to know, um, does the risk of depression, and we'll record it as depression, yes or no, does the risk of depression decrease if someone exercises regularly? And again, we'll record that as yes or no. So we'll make it simple for the sake of discussion. And we want to know, is this true um, for university students? Okay, so if university students are exercising regularly, does that lower the risk of depression? To try and study this, suppose we take a sample of 5,000 university students from a particular university and we ask them these survey questions. Now we'd like to generalize back to the population of university students in general. So first let's think of what is our unit. Our unit is a university student. Right? That's the unit or individual we're recording data for. What are the variables we have? We've recorded the variable of exercise, yes or no, and depression, yes or no. Who's the population that we'd like to generalize to? Well, we'd like to generalize back to the population of university students. What's our sample? Right, our sample is the 5,000 students from this particular university that we've surveyed. What's our parameter, our population parameter of interest? Well, that's going to be what is the true or the population difference in depression rates for those who exercise regularly and those who don't. Right, so we want to know how does the, the rate or likelihood of depression um, decrease if you're exercising regularly? Our sample statistic is going to be what was the difference in depression rates in our sample. Right? So if we look at what proportion of people who exercise regularly are depressed, what proportion of people who don't exercise regularly are depressed, and we take the difference in our sample. Right? That's our sample statistic. Now external validity. Right? We want to ask the question, is what we see in our study generalizable to university students um, in general? And the answer is it's probably not. Okay, we need to be a, a little bit careful with that. This particular university we've sampled from might be different than all universities in general, right? One important note is maybe the geography or the location. Right? Being in a certain location, people might be more, more likely to be depressed or less likely. They might be exercising more on average or less on average than others, right? So that's what external validity is trying to get at. How well can we take what we saw in our sample and generalize back to some population outside of the sample? Now, internal validity is asking the question, putting aside um, an external population, is our estimate um, within our study biased or not? And so a few things that we didn't control for were things like biological sex. Right? So males might be more likely or less likely to get depressed than females. We didn't control for what majors are people in. Right? So again, if people are majoring in certain subjects, that might be more likely to lead to depression or less likely. Okay, so these are things that are going to um, question the internal validity. Have we adjusted for all these necessary factors? We're going to build and expand on all these ideas, but here we've laid out some of the general terminology that will be used as we progress through these. Statistics is almost as yummy as chocolate. Hope you guys liked the video. Stick around, guys, because we got lots more.